Summer is supposed to give students a break from school, even if they're still learning. With students locked out of their classrooms since the middle of March, the summer option's more limited. The neighborhood house charter school in Dorchester has to use the fund for outdoor activity in a different way. Thanks to a partnership with Frugal Bookstore in Roxbury, lower and middle school students will have a summer reading adventure. To tell us what that means, our kindergarten teacher at the school and co-founder of the Nate Howe Adventure Fund, Meg Howe, and also with us is the co-owner of the bookstore, Clarissa Edgerton, uh, thank you very much for being with us. Thank Welcome. you. Thanks for having us. I, I want to start uh, with Meg because uh, the fund I just mentioned was named after somebody in your family. So yes. tell us how this all got started and, and what the mission is. Sure. So in uh, 2016, my nephew, Nate, who was 11 years old at the time, um, was hit while riding his bicycle and killed. And my sister and I, who both live here in Boston, we wanted to do something to honor his memory and the summer before he passed away he actually received a scholarship to go on his first overnight camping trip and it was you know wonderful for him so we were thinking about that and you know i've been teaching at neighborhood house for seven years now and uh, when i started as a fourth grade teacher one of the things we did were overnight camping trips with the students during the school year and so we do those starting in third grade and going up, you know, the school is growing. So now they're beyond eighth grade. Um, so we just thought it was a great opportunity to create an adventure fund, something that was similar to the scholarship that Nate received, but partnered through the school. And so we've been doing it since 2016. And this year we had enough donations to be able to offer buses for the lower school as well um, so that they could go on not overnight trips, but their regular field trips or add an additional field trip to what they already did. Um, so that's the, that's the fun. And then COVID happened and all, those, all the fundraising we did meant that we had this money and kids weren't going on trips. So we were trying to figure out what to do. And, and that's where you got the idea for the reading adventure, right? Yes. Yep. And so I have been uh, an avid reader my whole life. And that was my way to go on adventures uh, when I was younger and we couldn't go on trips was to take adventures through books. So we talked about possibly doing that. And uh, it was very important to me to partner with a local bookstore and frugal bookstore is our neighbors here in Dorchester. I'm in Dorchester as well. So uh, Clarissa, I, I want to ask you about the bookstore. Because these days, when there are so many people who order books online or, or think that they can read without a physical book, uh, uh, opening a bookstore is an adventure too. So what, what, what got you on that road? So we, uh, so as of June 2008, uh, Frugal Bookstore uh, came about. Uh, but before that, uh, you know, our, our name Frugal uh, Bookstore came from the Frugal Furniture Stores. So the owner, uh, Robert Romano of the Frugal Furniture Stores, he actually had small um, uh, sections of books in his furniture stores in Roxbury and in Mattapan. Uh, Leonard uh, Egerton, um, my my husband he started working for bob and um bob really wanted him to uh build this you know book business um um and so before 2008 maybe like maybe a couple of years two or three years before that uh leonard had been working with him and had been you know helping him build um or you know Leonard had been building this this book uh, bookstore uh, this book business and um, so our, our name we kept the name frugal because uh, when we were in the uh, Washington Park Mall uh, which is where the furniture store is located we actually moved um, just down the hall um, BNN used to be in the Washington Park Mall on Martin Luther King Boulevard and um, since then they moved to Eggleston but, um, you know, we, we decided to just keep the name Frugal uh, and use Frugal Bookstore because people just knew us. They were like, oh, I'm buying my books from Frugal. So we just kept it. Um, so it was, you know, it, it started with a vision that Bob had. Uh, and he, he wanted to uh, definitely, um, you know, he wanted somebody uh, and Leonard to, to really take over this, um, this business. So he sold um, the book portion of it uh, to uh, Leonard in 2008. So uh, for me, it was definitely something that um, I, um, 
I always, like Meg said, I, I had always been an avid reader my whole life. Uh, I never thought um, that I would ever be in, in the book business, um, but it was something that uh, I, I like to say kind of fell into my lap. Uh, sorry for the phone. Uh, <laughs> fell into my lap and uh, it, 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 it's taken off since then. So it, it's something that, um, you know, it, it really is near and dear to us. And uh, we, we're just grateful for the opportunity that we had. But of course, you're not just a clearinghouse for an inventory. I mean, you're a real reading presence in the community, right? Yeah. So right, we uh, we work with uh, we do a lot of book fairs with um, uh, Boston Public Schools. Uh, we do uh, you know charter schools. We do organizations. Uh, we we do a lot of like book events um, all over the city. Um, I'm sorry. Let me. <laughs> this, this phone is just ringing off the hook, um, <laughs> which is a good thing. I know they're like, why did you answer my call? But um, yeah, so we, we you know, we, we do a lot of events. Um, we work with a lot of schools and organizations. Um, we are part of the Boston Book Festival. Uh, we did Hub Week. Uh, so we, we've expanded, um, not just, you know, um, right, like, you know, schools and, 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 and bookstore, but we, we've kind of expanded as well. Meg, uh, what about the collaboration here? Because uh, it's one thing to just get books from a supplier, but maybe there's, a, there's more to the collaboration than that, isn't there? Yeah, well, our school is located in Dorchester, and we have a diverse population, but a large number of our students are students who are students of color, you know, from various backgrounds. Um, and we wanted to have books that students could see themselves in the books, you know, or the, and or the authors were written by people who looked like them. And um, so when I was looking at titles that we wanted, it, it just made sense that Frugal Bookstore, I mean, that's such a huge part of their mission and it's so important. Like it's the thing that helps kids when you see yourself in a book. I mean, who doesn't want that experience, you know? And, Unfortunately, in children's literature, that, that's only now just starting to, to get steam. So um, for Frugal Bookstore, who is already doing that, you know, it just seems like a natural place to, to match our, our idea with. Um, so we were really excited to, that we had that resource, actually. And to be honest, a lot of places don't even have that. So we are very lucky and very grateful. Um, First, uh, the, the idea is to, to give these books to students free of charge. Um, you've seen it before with, with your customers already. When kids get the books uh, from the literature that you're familiar with, what's it like? It's, you know, the, the smile that comes on their faces, um, it, it, it lights up, you know, to, like Meg said, to be able to uh, see yourselves in these books, uh, you know, you're um, represented, it, it really does something and it says a lot. And, um, you know, we have uh, children and youth come in and with families and they're, and, the, and children come in, they're like, oh my goodness, and, and not, I, I think that, um, you know, I think, you know, some children are used to going to the library, but there are a lot of uh, students that are not familiar with like, um, a, a, you know, like a library other than in their school, um, if the school is fortunate to have one. Uh, so when they come in and they, uh, and they see the books of brown and black faces um, and their faces light up, it, it really, um, you know, it, this is what we're here to do, right? Um, it, it really just, um, um, confirms and it really just just makes us feel really uh, valued that we are able to give this to our, our, our children in our community. Or maybe kids <laughs> thinking that they could be a writer of one of these mm -hmm. books. Absolutely, or yeah. illustrator, you know, absolutely. Yeah, we, when we were giving out the books, actually, um, we had so many people comment on the titles like, one little girl was like, that looks just like me in the story, <laughs> Saturday. And then yeah. we also had this book called The Jumbies. And yeah. two moms who came to pick up the book, they were like, The Jumbies. And I said, oh, do you know this book? And they said, no, we're, we're West Indian. Like, we know what the Jumbies are. We've never <laughs> seen that in a book before. So yeah. it's very it's awesome. Yeah. 
uh, Carissa, what, what about the level of business right now? Because, uh, you know, I think in this country here, there's this surge of interest in, in, in black or Afrocentric uh, literature that's going on right now. Has that come to help your business in any way? It has, um, you know, we, we are, uh, we've always had a website um, and, you know, we, but most of our business came from, uh, you know, our in-store um, customers coming in, uh, you know, we would get orders over the phone, uh, but it has definitely increased, um, you know, our online sales have, have increased to the point where we are, um, that's where most of our business now is coming from. And, and, and two, because we are still in a pandemic, right? Um, and people are um, like, okay, it's, 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 it's easy, you know, the convenience of, of shopping from their home or, you know, or remotely, as opposed to coming into the bookstore. There's nothing like going into a bookstore and, and, and browsing and, you know, picking your own books. But, um, you know, having a, a, a website that has, um, a lot of the books and not even all of the books that we have in our bookstore are on our website, um, but to just be able to, to look and see, um, you know, the selection of books that we have, people are, are uh, you know, we get emails like, oh my goodness, I had no idea you guys existed. And then I go on your website and I see all these wonderful books. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, it has definitely increased and we are um, truly just grateful that uh, uh, the support that we're getting just in our community and, and, and beyond, right? So we're getting orders from people who live in Alaska, um, Washington State, uh, you know, all the way on the other side, you know, and so we're just like, wow, how did they hear about us? You know, <laughs> the, the presence of social media um, has truly, uh, you know, um, has truly uh, spread and people are uh, near and far coming to us and, and, and ordering books. Well, uh, we have just enough time here, uh, Carissa, uh, to mention that the website people should go to for info about uh, Frugal Bookstore. Is frugalbookstore.net. Right. And uh, Meg, this is uh, an interesting chapter in things going on in the Neighborhood House Charter School. And I know you have events planned around the book distribution and beyond yeah. it. Uh, so if people want some more details, can they check that out somewhere? Yes, we have um, a website, natehowadventurefund.org. Uh, right. That's where you can find information about the website and then about the distribution of books. They can go on the neighborhood house charter schools, Instagram account or Facebook account. That's where we'll be posting like updates for um, the next round of deliveries for books. 